Hello. I wanted to take some time and just talk about one of my favorite episodes from Avatar The Last Airbender, and that is The Headband from Season 3, Episode 2. And this is when the gang has just started going undercover in the Fire Nation. They've just gotten their Fire Nation wardrobe and they are headed off into the city when Aang gets thrown into a Fire Nation school. Now if you look at the story and development of just the main gang, this could technically probably be considered a filler because everything that happens to them doesn't necessarily continue the main story of the show. And if you were to take it out, you probably wouldn't be confused moving forward of missing anything in the episode. The only valuable stuff really from this episode, story-wise, it comes from the villains, right? Zuko and Iroh have a lot of very important experiences that happen in this episode. But what the gang does get up to is just some of my favorite stuff in the entire series. There are three main things that I think they cover that they do so well that I love and I'm glad that they did. The first one is in regards to Aang and who he is naturally as a person. We know that he is a carefree kid, spunky, outgoing, joyful, fun person. But because of the storyline and the situations he's forced into, we never really get to see him in his element being who he really is. And this episode gives us that opportunity because we see flashbacks of when he lived with the monks and how he associated with the other children there. He's popular, people like to be around him and learn from him, and he has such a great fun energy. But you see it in that flashback, once he learns that he is the avatar and he has that burden on his shoulders, he no longer has the luxury to be a normal kid. And the other kids make that very apparent. What's going on? Now that you're the avatar, it's kind of an unfair advantage for whichever team you're on. But I'm still the same. Nothing's changed. So what? I can't play? That's the only fair way. Oh, okay. And same through the whole show as we're watching, he is fulfilling his avatar duties and he has no time to be carefree. So in this episode, disguised as a Fire Nation citizen, we are able to see him literally cut loose and just have fun. And it is so awesome to see Aang in his element, just being around other people. So I'm so grateful for the opportunity that this episode gives us to see Aang in his natural element, being who he is. The second point I want to talk about just goes into the world building of this world and this story, and that is how they show the Fire Nation from the inside, how normal citizens live in their day-to-day -day life. Just how they're promoting all this propaganda to the children and teaching them history from their point of view. And we see Aang call them out on it. What year did Fire Lord Sozin battle the Air Nation army? Kuzon? Is that a trick question? The Air Nomads didn't have a formal military. Sozin defeated them by ambush. And just being able to see these kids, they're not little monsters, they're not little enemies, they're normal kids that you feel like anyone could be, and Aang fits in with them so well. And so it gives us a whole nother view of the Fire Nation, that they aren't just the cookie-cut bad guys, because throughout the show so far, they've done a really good job of showing outside of the Fire Nation, there are people in the Water Tribe and the Earth Kingdom who are also evil and doing bad things. So we know we are in a world where it's not just straight good guys, bad guys. And this episode shows us from the other angle. It goes behind enemy lines, right? And shows that those people who we have been told are the bad guys, not every single citizen is. There are just many who are just normal people living their lives, growing up in the community as normal human beings. And so it's such a great bit of world building that takes place where we can see who the bad guys are supposed to be being just normal people. And the last one that I wanna talk about is in regards to Aang and Katara and their relationship. From the very first episode, they are obviously pushing these two to be a couple. It's so obvious. Why are you smiling at me like that? Uh, oh, I was smiling? So that's what you're expecting it to be like at the end of the show. But the thing is, they do a great job of showing that from Aang's side, but you don't get a whole lot of it from Katara's side. For the most part, throughout the show, it is definitely a mentor-student relationship. And so you don't get a whole lot of chemistry there, except, like I said, from Aang. So it's kind of hard to buy into that as being a nice, organic, 
a relationship that you can get behind when it feels just very teacher pupil. This episode is so important for the development of their relationship because it's basically the only time we see Aang take initiative in a romantic way when he goes over to Katara and invites her to dance. I don't know, Aang. These shoes aren't really right for dancing and I, I, I'm not sure that I know how to take my hand. Okay. And that to me is what sells in the very last episode then when they become a couple. Um, Cause if they didn't have that dance in the this episode of the headband, I would have a hard time buying the, their overall relationship in the end. Honestly, one of the only other times I feel like we get anything from, from Katara is in the episode The Fortune Teller, when she realizes that Aang is a powerful bender and that was in her fortune that she was gonna marry a powerful bender. But it lasts all of five seconds and then they don't ever go back to it again. I guess you could say that the episode Cave of Two Lovers could count as well to progress their relationship, but to me that's more just strategic for Katara and not romantic, so I don't really count it. Because they have a couple kisses, but all of them are initiated by Aang and Katara never really reciprocates or shows any emotion back that she feels the same way. So it's not totally believable from Katara's side. So this episode of The Headband, having Katara and Aang have that romantic moment is so important for selling their long-term relationship to the audience. So there are my thoughts on the episode The Headband. I'm just so grateful that the creators took the time to explore the character of Aang and give us a look into his personality and also exploring the world building and the culture of the Fire Nation and developing the relationship between Aang and Katara that they've been trying to pitch to us from the beginning, actually developing, developing that so we can buy it at the end. So thank you for listening and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.